welcome back to the lab again folks so we've got a package in here from pcb way i think this is going to be the board for my dc load so let's have a look at these that's exactly what they are let's get them out of there okay good good all the keep outs where they're supposed to be and that's a nice looking board we got that most of the parts on the bottom here and some parts on the top the reason i got the parts on the bottom is the heat sink itself so we've got the four mosfets here the heat sink itself is going to go between those so it'll be up off the board a little bit on standoffs but uh, a lot of these parts here would be too high to fit underneath it anyway so they're on the bottom and the board is is white uh, basically to reflect the the heat coming off of the heat sink alrighty then um, now I've got this big box of parts here from DigiKey as well as this one here from Amazon and uh, everything I need almost everything I need is in here besides a couple of uh, small components which I'll collect together and uh, we're going to get one of these uh, built up and we're going to start the testing today so uh, let me get right to that I'm going to build it off camera because it's going to be a rather long build and uh, we'll come back uh, and try and hook it all up and see if we can get it to work another thing I'm going to do is if you saw our last video I featured this uh, portable cordless soldering iron and uh, I'm going to try to build this whole board up with this iron up from a full charge to see how far I get if it does the whole thing, uh, that'd be quite amazing. If it doesn't, we'll at least know how many joints and how long we can run the soldering iron off a single charge. All right, folks, let me get right to that and I'll be right back. All right, so I, I soldered it all up. That little iron, I used that little iron, this little iron here, the one I showed you the other day. Now, it did pretty good. It uh, was able to do 90% of the joints or I'd say 80% of the joints and it lasts about 32 minutes, but it didn't it didn't die on me completely What it did was go into a kind of a standby mode So the iron was on but the heat was off and Every time I had to use it again. I had to wait 20 seconds for it to warm up So it became a little bit more difficult to use but it didn't quit on me entirely now I still don't know how long it, it'll go completely until it just quits but uh, I think it's already proven itself. I mean, if you want, if you need a little iron like this to do some light work, it'll certainly do the job. And for the price, it's it's pretty amazing. So is it a, again? We'll answer the question: Is it a a replacement for proper big 90 watt, 100 watt soldering iron? No, it's not. It's never intended to be that. But I think it's it, it's done pretty good. One place it did have uh, some problems was that. Uh, I have two huge big ground planes on this on both sides here because there's a lot of current. We're going to try to get up to 20 amps out of this thing. So I've got copper ports on both sides that are ground. And for some of the devices, like uh, this connector here, it's got direct connection to ground. So does this one here. And some of these other devices here got connections to ground. So it's very, very difficult to solder because heat just gets wicked away. And uh, it had difficulty with those. But even these big, like this, here's a big trace here. It's about 10 millimeters wide or a centimeter wide. It didn't have any problem with soldering into that. Uh, but the, the huge, big, both sides of the ground plane, yeah, it had trouble with those. All right, so there's the board. It actually looks pretty good. I, I, I like the way it's turned out. So we've got all the components on there now. And uh, this op amp goes in here microcontroller for the fans and the shutdown goes in there and now we just got to get the heatsink method up to it I've already got here's my op amp and I the microcontroller is already pre-programmed with a, a starting program but I have put on here a little header here so I can uh, reprogram it when it's in place there so a couple of things that we want to do I'm not going to complete this project today but I just want to get the initial stuff going I want to get it in running order so now I have here a transformer. This is a uh, half amp, 12 volt, half amp transformer. Should be plenty enough. The, each of the fans takes uh, 100 milliamps full blast. So we're going to need three fans 
And the only other thing then um, requiring any electricity from this transformer are the op-amp and the microcontroller. So if we do the math there, we're, we're roughly around 320 milliamps. This should do a really good job of it. And okay, so let's get that uh, turned on there before we put any op-amps or microcontrollers in it and get things set up, test some voltages, make sure that, uh, okay, the power's on, make sure that everything is uh, copacetic before we go and letting the smoke out of things. Can you read that meter well? I think you can, okay. So, okay, let's, um, this is ground here. So let's see what kind of voltage we have coming in. 20.5, so that should be good on both of these here. Well, this Bryman is a uh, slow auto ranging. I'm getting used to some of the newer meters that I've been reviewing later that auto range instantaneously. Sorry about that. I just had to attend to my little puppy there. Um, okay, so uh, let's see what we have coming out of those regulators. We have 12 volts, or 11.9, that's for the fans. This one here is going to go to the op amp, 11.8. And then we have to see what we have coming into the microcontroller. We have five. So that's all exactly as it should be. Now this heat sink is going to go in right here between those MOSFETs. And then the fans are going to be mounted to the end of the heat sink like so. I'm going to get the air to go this way because it's going to be sitting in the cabinet and right right there on the cabinet will be an exit for the air to go out. So it'll put the fans on like that and then this one will be sucking air out, this one will be blowing air in. Okay, and what I have to do then is mark, first we'll mark the bottom here, then we'll put the standoffs on it and then we'll mark the sides of the, the thing here where the FETs go into it. And then we'll mount it all off, and I'll mount uh, this FET here, is going to be our warmest one. So I'm going to put the thermocouple on there, that'll be mounted on directly on there. Actually not a thermocouple, it's a thermistor. Okay, so here we are. This is what I came up with, that thermal grease. Man, it ever, does it ever discolor the aluminum? I think it's what it's trying to, it polishes it or something, I don't know. But uh, yeah. It was looking fine until I got some of that that I had to clean off. All right, so there we have, we've got two fans on here. We've got this big gap here, but I have a solution for that. And I got a third fan on here. I'll tidy up these later when I'm putting the thing in the case, but now for the tests and all that, it's, it's gonna be fine. Just leave them like that. Stuff is a pain to get started. Okay, so that gives me a nice sealed passageway through the heatsink for absolute maximum cooling effect. All right, I think we're ready to get this uh, fired up. So what I'm gonna have to do, I'm gonna get an ammeter on it. I've gotta get my control on it, which now I'll turn down to zero. Okay, so here I'm going to plug in the power for it and this meter should come on and nothing's blowing up so far. And now I'm going to apply power supply to the input terminals now. Okay. Uh, this is good. We've got, we got the two volts there. And it looks like we've got uh, 17 milliamps. That's our minimum. Okay, let's uh, turn up the fine pot first. And hey, it's working. It is working. Freaking awesome. So I don't think we're going to make much heat with one watt here. Let's bring it up. Put five volts into it and uh, let's bring it up to about 20 watts. All right, I think we're going to need a few more watts. So let's bring up the voltage here. Let's bring up the voltage to 10 volts to double the watts. Okay, I'm just going to stick a thermocouple in here. I got a little bit of uh, thermal compound on there. I'm going to stick it in here between the uh, thermistor and the heat sink and see what kind of temperature we're at. So we're at 49 degrees C and the fans have not started coming on yet. So I think maybe some adjustment needs to be made to the program. So now I've got it set up uh, so I, I can access all the uh, 
circuitry on it. Okay, so I've I've put on this cable here onto it to in order to be able to program it in real time. And I put a debug program into it. You can see on the screen here, I, I set it off to, to begin at anything over 90 red from the um, analog to digital converter. It would start the, the fan going. But it looks to me like we're getting uh, 35 degrees here. We're bringing in a 46. You can see that there on the upper right in the debug window. So we got to then change the parameters of this program. Okay, we're down at uh, about 34 degrees and the fans are not running and we don't really have anything. It's 0.174 watts through it. Let's start turning it up here and see when the fans, what temperature the fans come on. Let's, let's crank it up to, uh, see if we can get up around 60 watts. And here we go. 40 degrees, fans look like they're trying to turn on. Yep. So it looks like they get started around about 40 degrees. Fans are speeding up. Now the fans going might actually reach an equilibrium on temperature at 60 watts. Probably something substantially below 75 degrees. I'm, at least I'm hoping. About 60 degrees now, and the fans look like they're just a bit above half speed. So the fans kicked up another notch in speed here, and they're still at 60 watts, but the temperature's now starting to come down a little bit. So I think we, you know, it's around about 66 degrees is uh, what we're going to be at for 60 watts. That's pretty good so far. So I'm going to call it quits there, folks. We're going to have three parts to this series. One more where we test the limits of this and another one where we package it all up into the final case and uh, you know, test it one more time just to make sure that we didn't bugger anything up. That'll wrap this project up. So I'd like to thank PCBWay again for making this possible. They're a great partner to have. And I'd like to thank all you guys for coming out. I hope you got something out of this today. I'm really delighted that it's, it's working as designed so far. It's uh, really satisfying when one of your little creations works out. So, okay, we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.